From being the most loved host in America, to getting so exposed that she eventually had to end her show, Ellen DeGeneres has had quite a ride. Where did it all go wrong? Let's take a look at some of her most controversial moments. Starting with an awkward reveal, major eyebrows were raised. Yep, it's when Mariah Carey declined to address rumors that she was having her first child with her ex-husband, Nick Cannon. Ellen offered the singer a glass of champagne on the Ellen DeGeneres show in November 2008, knowing that her not drinking would signal a pregnancy. Yep, without the singer's permission, Ellen DeGeneres forced Mariah Carey to announce her pregnancy to a national audience. Let's toast to you not being pregnant. If you're not pregnant, then oh we should. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that. The host attempted to force her to take a glass of champagne, but Carey refused and revealed she was expecting. What an uncomfortable situation to put Mariah into. I can have a, uh, some champagne. It's, it's just fattening. So, you can you know, have champagne? That's not champagne, because you can't No, it is. That. You want to taste it? I can't believe you did this to me, Ellen. What? No, Are I'm, you trying I'm to not just... going to ask you if you're pregnant this or not. This is peer I'm pressure. Say. You see what Ellen is doing? This is peer pressure. In fact, she took years to speak on the issue. In an interview more than a decade later, she said, All I can say is that I felt quite uncomfortable at that time, and I've really been having a hard time dealing with the fallout. Why does she keep talking about shit? Carrie and Cannon delivered twins Moroccan and Moreau in April 2011, but back then she wasn't ready to tell anyone as she just had a miscarriage. What might have seemed like a prank to Ellen was actually quite insensitive and personal. Hello? Apparently, her behavior was a well-kept Hollywood secret. After years of Hollywood whispers, numerous people came forward in 2020 to accuse DeGeneres of being cruel to those around her and her team. The allegations of a hostile workplace made by staff of The Ellen DeGeneres Show were all over the internet, detailed in back-to-back -back pieces published by BuzzFeed News. The Finding Nemo actress sent an email of apology to her crew at the time, and later that year, during the season 18 launch of her program, she addressed the incident in front of the public, but she was never able to win people back. There were allegations of a toxic work environment at our show, and then there was an investigation. I learned that things happened here that never should have happened. Truth is, I am that person that you see on TV. And if I've ever let someone down, if I've ever hurt their feelings, I am so sorry for that. So, DeGeneres announced in May 2021 that her talk show would end the following season. I promise you that we are going to have a fantastic final season. It will be a season where I truly get to say thank you. Thank you all and every day will be a celebration. But do you know how it all started? It was when fellow comedian Kevin T. Porter started a thread in March 2020 asking people to post anecdotes about her being mean to them. Sure enough, it quickly became a trending topic on Twitter. People had their stories of all sorts of encounters with Ellen, and she'd been pretty unlike her TV self to all of them. Later, DeGeneres was criticized for being cold and aloof by YouTuber Nikki Tutorials. Hi, Nikki. Hello. So nice to meet you. Oh my god, it's an honor. <laughs> As reports about DeGeneres grew, so did claims that her program had a hostile environment that included sexual misbehavior. Turns out she had a reputation for being harsh. And that's according to Hollywood insiders and Los Angeles natives who claim to have worked with DeGeneres. Like, just hear this. People are required to chew gum from a bowl outside DeGeneres' office before speaking with her because she has a sensitive nose. Oh, and you have to go home and take a shower if she feels you smell that day. All that you see on TV isn't real life, folks. When asked about the reports after the accusations were made public, Ellen said that she didn't know where they were coming from. I had a hard time understanding it. I'm still baffled by it, because it seems too planned. In fact, she claimed that the news had surprised her, because all the guests had mentioned was the happy environment. The Nile isn't just a river in Egypt. Which brings us to her making fun of Taylor Swift's love life. Ah, the running joke of the century. Taylor Swift only makes songs about boys who break up with her. So does Drake and a million other artists. Oh, and the whole shaming that goes with the number of guys she's dated. Spearheaded by none other than Ellen. Many pop culture experts have started to reconsider the celebrity interview format and how it's frequently intended to berate and humiliate women. In this instance, the target was Taylor Swift. Even though speculation about her love life has long existed, the singer prefers to keep it a secret. In a clip that recently resurfaced, Ellen kept making jokes about her dating actor Zac Efron in 2012. She then started a game in which different guys were shown on screen, and Swift had to tell which one she's dated. Becoming visibly upset and uncomfortable, the singer pleaded with Ellen to stop. In the 
unedited clip, you can see that she's nearly at the brink of tears while everyone laughs around her. Later in an interview, she agreed to feeling horrible and pointed out that she was just a young girl back then. Apparently, making people feel horrible comes naturally to Ellen. You know when comedians start taking digs and it's not funny anymore? Well, DeGeneres appeared to criticize Celine Dion in 2006 for not cutting her son's long hair. In the clip, we can see her commenting, it seems like you're too busy because you're neglecting to clip your son's hair. And just like that, Dion snaps back, do you have an issue with that? She went off to say that she can't make everyone happy, which is basically code for buzz off. Honestly, we're embarrassed for you, Ellen. Now, what's more embarrassing than not realizing your privilege? DeGeneres continued creating material from her $27 million California home while under quarantine during the coronavirus lockdown. Yep, a $27 million home in the poshest area of the city. And yet, DeGeneres said during her first show broadcast from home that it's like being in jail. It's mainly because everyone here is gay and I've been wearing the same clothes for 10 days. Over the past year, I've spent hours and hours getting everything exactly right, trying to make it beautiful and cozy. Given the lavish home DeGeneres and other A-list celebrities enjoy during quarantine, the clip received critical feedback online. And rightly so. People also brought up the potential of COVID-19 spread for those who were actually incarcerated. Talk about bad taste. Oh, and get this. During the coronavirus-related shutdown, the Ellen DeGeneres show crew workers claim they went over a month without hearing anything regarding the status of their salary or working hours. Only four of the 30 staff members on the show were chosen to work at the at-home production. This sparked controversy of its own, owing to DeGeneres' complaints about being confined on air. Many of those crew members had worked on the show for all 17 years of its production. Plus, despite the show continuing to air from DeGeneres' house, the crew was also informed to expect a salary cut of 60%. All that talk about kindness, huh? But nothing comes close to the iconic Dakota Johnson snapback. This was both iconic and awkward in equal proportions. Dakota Johnson played a pivotal role in one of the Ellen Show's most memorable episodes, and the most controversial, too. In November 2019, after discussing her 30th birthday celebration on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Dakota Johnson set the internet on fire. The Fifty Shades of Grey actor and DeGeneres debated whether or not the TV host had received an invitation in the popular clip. It starts when Ellen says that Dakota had ignored her invitation to her birthday party. Happy belated birthday. When was your birthday? It was October 4th. October 4th. <laughs> You turned 30. I did. And um, how was the party? I wasn't invited. Dakota probably thought, not today, because boy did she go off. She revealed that the host gave her a hard time over not being invited last year, so she made it a point to do so this year. Last year, no, last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch of about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. I did invite you and you didn't come. So. This time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. It's also when she delivered the iconic line, it's not really like that, it's not the truth, Ellen. Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. In fact, the actress retaliated by claiming that Ellen had been invited but had declined to go. Johnson also said during the conversation, I didn't even know if you liked me. Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> of course I like you. You knew I liked you. Later, it was revealed that DeGeneres and Bush attended the NFL game on the same night as the actress's party. Oh, which is another thing that had the host in knee-deep of controversy. Anywho, some viewers found the exchange amusing, while others described it as tense and uneasy. It sure put Ellen in her place. That's all for now. See you around.